Welcome back, Balance Beamers. I'm your host, Nikita Thigpen, and once again, we have the pleasure to balance our lives and our business as we step onto the beam together. Today, we have an incredible gentleman. Tom Gill is a Vistage Chair, dominating in his field on every way and now impacting in a new way with high-level performers, high-level professionals, and those that are running multi-million dollar businesses. As a distinguished Toastmaster speaker, a major connector, and I can vouch for that because he's done that with me with at least, I don't know time, what, 40 people? We are so excited to welcome him as he shares with us life on the beam. Tom, welcome to The Balance Beam. Thank you so much, Nikita. It's, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be part of this uh, program and this journey with you. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet and so peaceful and so calm. I love it. <laughs> Tell all the Balance Beamers about your non-humble, awesome past because you've done some amazing things that have led you to this point and now you're juggling some more stuff. But before we get to your juggle, I want them to know about your journey. Yeah, so uh, one of four boys, born and raised in, the, in Philadelphia. Uh, a lot of people call me Gilly from Philly, <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll take that. Um, you know, my, my journey started, my, my, what I noticed when I was growing up was that I was a little bit different than some of the other guys in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, for me, I wanted to explore, I wanted to see the world, I wanted to, you know, kind of create a different path, whereas many of the guys that I hung out with are either dead, unfortunately, or in jail, or, uh, you know, just not, you know, fulfilling their dreams or or living a a significant life, and uh, so for me, that journey started when I decided to go to college at Westchester University. Wow. What did you study? So, with that whole process, um, I didn't want to just graduate with a business degree. I wanted to really create my own college experience, and that I did through the liberal studies or liberal arts program. So I focused on speech communications, which I knew was going to be helpful in whatever job I had or whether whatever career path I chose. And then I also minored in political science. I was thinking back then that. I, you know, I wanted to change the world, I wanted to get into politics, and then, uh, you know, toward the tail end of my college career, decided to get against that route. Well, it's interesting that the way you started is the is the place that you're in now. Although you may not have done the political process, you are impacting the world in a really big way with some of the most major decision makers that we have on the East Coast through what you're doing with Vistage. So you actually, interestingly enough, did kind of a, a 180 in that place, although you took a, an interesting journey to get there. Yeah, you know, right off the bat in college, uh, a good, good friend of mine who I, who I uh, we went to college together with, um, he and I both got involved in speech communications. I believe he majored in it, I minored in it. Um, but I also got some good practical experience by getting involved in the fraternity system and the Greek system at Westchester University. And uh, that was an incredible journey as well. You know, at that point, I, I felt pretty confident getting in front of people and, and speaking. And yet, it was a very humbling experience because there were things that I didn't know about people and running organizations. And you know, I was able to really leverage some of the things that I had learned as in as a, a um, oh, in my work study role working for the provost and then ultimately the president of the university because I saw how they were able to communicate at different levels with different types of people and um, you know so I, I kind of used that experience and leveraged that to my success mm-hmm. within the uh, Interfraternity Council and the Intergreek Council and uh, you know just an, an incredible journey and uh, you know for a lot of people they, they used to call me the, the handout king because I was always trying to share information and uh, new tools and techniques that I learned in the office, um, you know, with with my fellow frauders and and other Greek members. (laughs) The handout king. That's different. (laughs) 
And because you were a part of a fraternity, I'm sure that has a lot to do with some other things too, but we won't go there on the balance beam. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious though, you've had a lot on your plate. Like you, you've had some pretty distinguishing honors um, as a speaker, as a professional, and even as a connector in all the places you've traveled and all the things that you've done. How are you managing that with kids, your dad? I mean, you're, you're doing some pretty incredible things. Yeah, so early on, uh, when I was married, we, uh, you know, decided that I wasn't really looking to move out of the area. We wanted to stay close to mm-hmm. family and friends. And then uh, even after uh, I divorced, um, felt it was really important for me to stay local. So while there might have been other opportunities for me to travel the country and travel the globe, uh, I really just needed to focus on being around for my boys who are now 19 and 23. The younger one is a sophomore in college at Westchester University, <laughs> incidentally. Uh, his name is Connor, and uh, my older son, TJ, graduated from Temple just recently, just this past semester. And uh, so I just I felt it was really important to be around them as they were growing up. And uh, even today, I'm, I'm not really interested in traveling the country, traveling the globe. Uh, you know, one of the books that I read years ago called Acres of Diamonds speaks to that idea that there's enough business, there's enough opportunity mm-hmm. uh, right, in your, right in your own backyard. Mm-hmm. So, Philly from Philly isn't going anywhere. <laughs> well, you're anchored, and that says a lot that you don't feel the need to kind of escape your surroundings. There are definitely different schools of thoughts around that where some people feel like you need to go away and kind of make your name in other places and locations and you'll be respected more um, in your homeland or your hometown. Um, And then there are people who say, this is my city, this is my town, this is my country, so to speak, so I'm going to dominate here. And it sounds like you're taking a little bit of the latter approach, which is a good thing. Yeah, you know, as a connector, I um, you know, recently in, in a couple of opportunities where I had to travel, I stayed with a good friend, the good the good friend that I mentioned that went to Westchester University with me in San Diego. I just stayed with another good friend when I was out in Dallas. Um, you know, I, I've got connections in Japan from when I used to work for a technical company back in the uh, '90s and early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've got people you know, kind of spread throughout the globe so that if I, if and when I do travel, I have people that I can stop by and, and visit and potentially stay with. So you have your global connections. You don't necessarily need to physically remove yourself and go to those places. That's pretty awesome because it adds more, pun intended, it adds more balance to your life. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome. So tell me more about what you're doing with the men and women. And I know you are very connected to diversity on multiple levels and a lot of initiatives that you do in your personal and professional hat. And you're kind of changing the game a little bit in the community that you're creating as a Vistage chair now. So tell me a little bit about the type of people that are a part of your group and that will be a part of the peer advisory group as you continue to build and strengthen it? Because I know you're looking for not only specific industries to bring together um, as an advisor, but you're a true head heart guy. And I know that it really matters to you that people feel like they're balanced in their lives so they can be really bold and amazing in their business. Um, And I don't say that lightly because I think we share that same connection in that and your platform to do that is to help these CEOs that are at another level in their professional self, but they're also making sure that they're still connected to that personal self. Yeah, okay. So growing up in the uh, you know, post-civil rights movement of the 60s, uh, you know, I, I saw a lot of disdain and, and ignorance, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, you know, even all through grade school, middle school, high school, you know, there were a lot of bigots out there and uh, you know, when I got to high school, it was it was a melting pot. You know, I went to Central High School. I was fortunate enough to get into the school and, and stay there and graduate from Central High School, which was truly a melting pot from yeah. all over the city. So we had, you know, the, the blacks, the whites, the Asians, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. and you know, it just it kind of forced us to really look at life a little bit differently. And so when I got out to 
college and, and beyond, I always kind of had that in the back of my mind that, yeah, this world is a, it's a diverse world and there is greatness in diversity. And, uh, you know, growing up as a, as a white man, not all white men feel that way. And unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of um, companies and organizations that say they want diversity, but yet when you look on their website, the pictures of their executive team, it's all white guys. And yeah. there might be a female in the HR department, but she doesn't have her picture yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, so for me, building this Vistage group and, and groups, uh, I'm really committed to having diversity of color, of ethnicity, ethnicity um, obviously, um, you know, age differentials, whatever, whatever I can do to, to really look at people as different people, that's where the, the, the gold is going to come from because there's already too many all white guy clubs out there, white guy organizations, mm-hmm. and I've, I've, I've talked to numerous people over the last several months about that, and uh, you know, one of the things that, that they often complain about is that there is no there is no diversity. There's no women in certain groups. Right. There's no color, and uh, you know, there's there's no youth. And you know, if you're if you're if you're going to be successful in this global business, then you've got to include all of those types of people. Absolutely. I mean, you're you're really focused on making sure that we blend all of the flavors in the melting pot, to use your words, so we can get the best dish possible, whatever the purpose that we're mixing the ingredients for, to bake a cake, to build a business. Um, you're trying to make sure that these people that you're bringing together in a pair advisory format are able to have all the elements they need. Um, from a, an estrogen, testosterone, cultural, ethnic, racial background. And all of the people are clearly magnificent because they've already built businesses and they're already thriving. They're already high performers, but they still need each other. And I think that what you're doing through the Visage platform is allowing them to do that. So I'm grateful that you found um, a new way to impact. Um, and even though it wasn't politics from days of old when you were first going down that road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so w- with that, um, you know, people, if, if, you're a, uh, if you're a white guy, if you're a, a, you know, a, a black woman, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. you grow up and you have all these values that are, that are taught to you and so forth. But, you know, unless you're really integrated in your neighborhood and in your mm-hmm. church or civic mm-hmm. organizations, you may not really be able to, to see and um, respect and also acknowledge mm-hmm. some of the other thoughts and ideas that are coming from different perspectives. And that's what it's all about. Everybody has different perspectives, not that mine is better or mine is right or yours is better or yours is right. It's just, it's different. So you take that and uh, you know, kind of put that in your funnel and, and process it. Well, that's a good point. I mean, there's a lot of people who are not putting it in their funnel. They're letting things just kind of fall through a filterless system, um, sometimes because of lack of boundaries. Um, And it causes, when you're someone who's a a change maker and you're trying to do things in a way that's just right, it shouldn't necessarily have to be a new way, um, but you're just trying to do it better in the, the system that you're in because as a white man who is at the top of his game, who comes from that professional corporate background and, you know, technically you can walk into any of those clubs, so to speak, and and blend right in, you're coming in as a change maker. So I'm sure you get, not just because of, of a cultural reason necessarily, but I'm sure with you making those changes, you're getting some negativity. So what are you doing for yourself as a man to just release some of that negative energy and kind of get it away from you without absorbing it and it becoming some infectious toxic part of you know yourself that's causing stress and cardiac issues and all kinds of other things what are you doing for yourself so i've been part of the 5 a.m club if you will for the better part of the last 30 years Mm -hmm. always uh you know whether i'm traveling or whether i'm here in the philadelphia area uh and it hasn't always been 5 a.m but 
for the most part it's 5 to 6 a.m. I'm getting up and I'm getting myself to the gym and uh, you know that really kind of starts my day so in the event that I miss the gym I usually try to do something else that you know gives me some physical exercise so I can get energized and uh, you know once once that starts then it's just uh, you know, I've, I've got my tasks, I've got my meetings, I've got my day laid out the night before. Usually look at that the night before, and, you know, coming from the, the Covey world of Seven Habits of Highly Effective mm-hmm. People and, you know, mm-hmm. doing all the planning and uh, quadrant two activities, if you will, try to really focus on the week and the month and the, the, the big rocks or high payoff activities. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, while there is a lot of noise, I, I try not to focus on the negativity and the people that are negative and, uh, you know, just try to look at the, the positive things or the, the things that can uh, that I can draw inspiration from even in a, a negative situation. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of issues or, or comments out there about President Obama or the mm-hmm. police or or, you know, different circumstances, and you really just, I, I really focus more on, you know, what what positive impact have they made, what can they do differently, what can we learn from the scenarios, and, uh, you know, let's not just, let's not focus on the negative of every, uh, of every situation that's out there. Well, yeah, I mean, when you look at the news, there's so much negativity that you can be inundated from, whether it's world news, um, wars, uh, starting wars, issues with monetary value of dollars and how that can impact us way down into the depths of poverty um, and all kinds of different things that are going on that could make anyone be a little bit irritated. What are you doing to refocus? Because it's easy to get pulled into that warp. I already know the whole golf club you know, uh, phenomenon where you go and you can have conversations and you can talk business, but you start with those icebreakers of what's happening in the world. Before you know it, you could be going down that rabbit hole of negativity really quick. So what exactly are you doing to refocus yourself when you feel like you're being pulled into a place that you don't necessarily want to go to and still have your boundaries set on where you're willing to go and where you're not willing to go in good company? So, I mean, it requires, uh, you know, some compassion, which for me is something that I've been working on. Uh, probably not where I need to be with that, but, uh, you know, growing up in an environment where it wasn't really taught, um, you know, you weren't really, I wasn't really encouraged to share my emotions as a, uh, as a, as a male growing up and uh, in a male-dominated household, you mm-hmm. know, three three brothers, father and mother, um, it, you know, it was sometimes challenging, but so I'm, you know, the compassion part I'm, I'm working on now, so that means really listening as if you were walking in their shoes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and at the same time, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to have pity parties and, and, and really just kind of take you down that rabbit hole, but if you can get them to just kind of pause as, as you do, <laughs> the, the work that you do, Nikita, uh, really hit that pause button and reflect on it. Is it is it life-changing? Is it life-threatening? Uh, and as, a, as an expression growing up, I heard this all the time, don't make mountains out of molehills. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes people make mountains out of molehills, so sometimes they just need to hear that it's not a mountain it is a molehill yeah and obviously for the mountains and you know it's, it's all hands on deck people really need to uh, come to the forefront and, and try to deal with those as best they can and, and uh, you know if it's crisis management or whatever it is you need to go there but for the most part many of these issues that we face on a daily basis are little pebbles or mm-hmm. um, molehills and not mountains I'm smiling so hard. Um, And of course, the the camera's only going to show you because you're talking, but I was laughing. I did a, uh, I think it was a a business barrier breaker session maybe three years ago. And it was like a a four series session. And one of the things that I did 
with the, um, for whatever reason, it was majority women. Um, the diversity was widespread and we had one man show up and I don't know why, but we had one man show up and we, we did a, um, an interactive activity um, around your pebbles versus your boulder issue and really being able to separate it. Because you think about it, you get a pebble in your shoe and you're irritated to the high heavens as if your leg just got cut off. Like you are so concentrated on that pebble, but you're not even paying attention to the big boulder that's in front of you because you're walking around all day kind of complaining, uh, your center, you're focused on that thing versus those other things. And we don't wanna discount the fact that pebbles are real. You know, pebbles are annoying, they're irritating, they could be uncomfortable. If you stand on them long enough, they really can cause uh, some irritation to you. But so you have to handle it. But the bolder issue is the thing that you should focus on. Like focus on what matters. Um, and I think to your point that a lot of people get caught in all of those pebble problems um, that they want to focus on because on some levels it's easier to think about that small little annoying thing that technically you could pick up and just throw away and deal with. But the bolder issue, whatever that is in your life. For some people, it's shame, it's guilt, it's being vulnerable, it's fear of being unleashed just from themselves. It's all kinds of things that could be very heart-centered stuff. Or your big bolder issue, which is typically always connected to heart, may be showing up in the form of a financial issue for you. Money mindset means a lot, and we talk about that a lot on the balance beam, of how people will defend themselves um, because of their money mindset and maybe I'm just going to pick on women balance beamers don't be angry with me but because I'm a woman I'm going to go there and Tom will come to the defense of his wife and all the other women he knows <laughs> but for women we have a poor habit of helping other people as our way of um, dealing with our bolder issue but we're not dealing with it we're, we're literally hiding behind this gifting, this nurturing that we're raised with, and then we're poured out, we're empty, we ha we're not refilling or refueling anything, we have no recharge systems, and we're walking around like a, a woe is me, no one cares. On the other side of that, sometimes we'll spend and focus on spending money, giving, giving, buying for other people's. I used to do it all the time. I would buy, I wouldn't buy for me, but I would buy for others and I would buy for the house. That made me feel like spending was okay so my money mindset was tied to a lot of the other things that i wasn't willing to deal with and i could just sweep that under the pebble rock instead of dealing with the big boulder issue which which was a much much bigger problem that i was having but i just didn't have the energy the time or the effort to put forward yeah you know uh again growing up in, a, in an old male male household uh no sisters uh, i was i was the i was the, the daughter that my parents never had um i just i felt compelled to you know help my mom in the kitchen and so that was that was a great learning experience there being in, in that type of environment I, I can see how women especially moms go down that path and you know for um for what it's worth, you just you really need to take time out and do for you. We don't, she you know, she does a lot for her kids and for me and my kids, and uh, you know she's there's some shopping. She's out thinking about what she can get for the <laughs> house or for the kids, and so I make sure that you know whether it's or something special so that she can go out and just. Spend some time on the and and, uh, and money on herself. Absolutely, you're a good husband. You're making sure that even if she's not willing to carve out some space and time and an opportunity for herself, that you're going to make sure um, that you take care of her. That's what balances you. You can kind of come to each other and and help literally stabilize each other when the other seems to be you know teetering one way or another which brings me to my next point of how are you two reconnecting like what do you do for fun to just you know make sure you have time for the two of you away from your kids are older now but i know that that doesn't mean that they don't need you i get that so what are you doing for yourselves um you know, we, we like to go and hang out. Uh, my sweetie's cousin plays in a band, so I like to go out and watch them play music. It's all 80s rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> they play, you know, quite a bit, so I like to follow them. And, 
you know, it's summertime now, so we like to hit the Jersey Shore. Uh, you know, one of the passions that I have from growing up, and I'll, I'll attribute this to my dad because he was always a, uh, a great person to go to the beach with because he was he was great at riding the, the waves, mm -hmm. body surf, body surfing. And uh, so I love to, to ride, to ride uh, the waves down at the Jersey Shore. And, uh, you know, we've got a nice deck out back here. So a lot of times, even in the morning, we might just go out and have a cup of coffee and relax on the deck and just observe nature. And we've got a lot of cool plants out there. I can tell you what they are because I don't have the green thumb. <laughs> I've got the purple thumb. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of cool birds that come through the yard and it's just it's amazing to just watch nature at its best out there yeah it sounds like you guys really just like to be centered um and that's a, a huge part of refueling for yourselves not only in your relationship but just for yourself that you don't necessarily need to do a lot of wild and crazy things although body surfing it's not necessarily the, the calmest thing in the world <laughs> You know, if people tease me because when I come out of the water, I have this, uh, <laughs> you know, I look like that. But it's uh, it's fun, it's exhilarating, and um, you know, it's a, it's a great great thing for uh, to to release and to just you know have fun. That's awesome. So, what would you recommend for balance beamers all over the world who are looking for some? good place to go to a favorite place to stay whether it's a few hours or a few days what would you recommend uh one of the places that we went to a few years ago is uh, down in the chesapeake st michael's and uh hmm. just a really quaint place on the chesapeake if you have your own boat it's ideal if you don't then uh, you know you can take a, a boat ride and uh, just kind of relax and and enjoy the, the peaceful serenity of the Chesapeake Bay. I like the Chesapeake. That sounds like a really good idea. Do they allow you to rent boats there, or that's not necessarily an option? Yeah, yeah some places have, have boats for you, and then they have uh, different charter boats that you can ride on. So I'm curious. I have a really, the most important question ever. Body waving, like body surfing. Do you have yeah. to know how to swim to do that? Well, you just have to know how to stay afloat and, uh, <laughs> and, and not get uh, pulled in, you know, depending on the, the current. Mm. Uh, I mean, swimming lessons probably wouldn't hurt if you don't know how to swim, but it's really, it's it's an art to, to get on top of the wave and to mm. ride it all the way into land. And I'm always excited about doing that. My kids are getting better. Uh, as I've taught them since my taught my dad taught me years ago, so mm. it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's a part of your legacy. It sounds like you're doing more than just riding the wave. You're kind of conquering something that could technically swallow you up. And I think that that's apropos for a lot of people in their lives, um, stepping out on the wave, so to speak, and trying to really maneuver in a way that you flow with it instead of against it. Um, and you know I'm visual from our previous conversation. Tom knows my eyes go everywhere. I talk all over the place. But I can I can steady myself and see that when I envision body body surfing. Yeah. So the you know the, the natural flow and the natural laws of the world really dominate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know you could you could say that riding the wave is something like that in terms of. Um, you know, how do you attack it? How do you how do you look at it? How do you how do you observe? How do you you know know which one to jump on and to ride? Mm -hmm. And much like you know in business, you know a lot of people like to ride different waves of technology and so forth. Um, and at, at some point you're going to get off the wave, so it's a matter of you know what's the next wave, and uh, you know certainly learn from the mistakes and the trials and tribulations of riding those waves because they're not always fun. Sometimes with the current it, uh, and the undertow, it, it picks you up and you know, spins you all around and uh, I've swallowed enough ocean seawater to know that uh, that is the case. And but it just, you know, it's just like anything else. You fall down and you get back up and uh, ride, try to ride the next wave. 
That's an awesome visual. Thank you for that. I think that anyone could relate to that on multiple levels, whether it's riding the wave in your life and or riding the wave in your business. I think that that's amazing. Um, that's why you do what you do and you're a great coach. I know you're an incredible speaker and we all know, well, they will know soon how much of a connector you are. You definitely keep your network tight and strong, um, very well filtered, and you really mean to connect people that can um, share more than just a business idea or thought, but just creating relatability and beginning a relationship. And I think that that separates you, Tom, from a lot of people. Yeah, um, went, I went through the Strength Finders program uh, a year and a half ago or so, and two of my top five, if you will, are significance and connectedness. So mm -hmm. it's no wonder that I'm you know, doing what I'm doing in terms of networking and trying to stay plugged into um, my, you know, my, my fraternity, my cousins, my family, people that I meet through Toastmasters, through mm -hmm. ATD, through other associations. And uh, you know, there's just, we're all interconnected and uh, you know, no, 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 no one's li living this world and going through this world on their own. So why not pull people through and, and uh, you know, kind of bring people along with you on the ride? So that's kind of one of my mantras lately. Absolutely. And you definitely are doing that. So I commend you. So how can people give back and connect to you? Because you are, in addition to being a person that they want to connect with just as a resource, you really are doing some amazing things, especially for CEOs that are at a certain place in their business. And they're really looking for that collaborative um, mentorship and coaching, consulting basis that's more than just a typical I don't want to demean it, but a typical mastermind. So how can people follow up with you? Well, I, I did buy the URL, Your Value Machine, because that's what uh, one of my high school friends <laughs> told me that I am. Uh, the, the website is not up and running yet. It will be someday. But uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And, and as you connect with me, uh, you know, let's, let's carve out time to talk and have a conversation and find out you know what you're all about and I'll share with you my story and uh, you know we can we can connect this world together and, and really kind of make a difference and uh, op open up our, our networks to each other and, and share and learn and grow together you've been amazing Tom thank you for sharing the Gilly from Philly side of yourself all the way through the very high level high performing professional that's in tune to connecting with others Stay right there and don't go anywhere. Balance Beamers, stay tuned for more tools to infuse. Welcome back to another empowerment moment just for you. Oh, the things that have happened this morning. Only a few hours into the day and it hasn't started the way I intended it. But I guarantee you it will end better than I expect. Do you know how I can make that guarantee? Because I'm not blocking my day with the negativity that may have showed its ugly head earlier in the hours of the day. I am determined and committed to make the ending of my day better than how it started. I may not walk into an opportunity for a billions of dollars. Yes, I said cabillions. I may not necessarily return into my husband's arms with flowers and dark chocolate and honey-coated kisses all day long, oh, that would be nice, but I definitely can have a better ending to my day than how it started, simply by shifting my mindset, by making it a point to say, you're going to have a really good day. No matter how many times I stubbed my toe, spilled my coffee, ruined a shirt, or did any of the above, I am intending, visualizing, wanting, and attracting a better ending of my day. I hope you enjoyed this empowerment moment.